everyone. Thank you so much for being with us again today. We are uh, showing our appreciation for my wonderful staff that works on our constituent services. Uh, let me introduce Don Pollinger, who has trained all of our staff from the beginning. Don does an amazing job and is always available to help constituents in the second congressional district and Aaron Cotton from our Concord office as well. And Aaron's learned a great deal about immigration and uh, was very helpful bringing families out of Afghanistan. And now uh, we have a, an extraordinary story coming out of Ukraine. Um, so why don't we dive right in? Alexis, do you wanna go ahead and, and tell your story? Um, Alexis comes to us from Hanover. And thank you for being with us. We're very grateful. No, thank you for the opportunity. And um, I want to give a shout out to your office and especially Erin Cotton, who has been so helpful, so tenacious, efficient, and absolute pleasant to, to um, communicate with. I can't say enough about her good work. Um, I contacted your office um, because my ex-husband was and it was in Ukraine in Kiev uh, when the invasion started, and um, he has a number of particular issues that complicated things. Um, we had to first convince him that it was important to leave; that it wasn't going to be just a, a small incursion into Donetsk that it was going to be a full invasion. And he has a serious back problem that had him essentially uh, bedridden for two months before the invasion. So it was hard to convince him that he needed to get out of bed and manage the pain as best as he could. He has a uh, Russian wife, and their son is also a Russian citizen, even though they are um, permanent residents of Ukraine, which also complicates issues. Well, at any rate, um, we uh, convinced them to get on the road. Uh, it took, they were in their car for 10 days. Wow. Um, they finally made it to Lviv. They, um, stayed in a hotel just to rest and, and get some, some more energy. And then they went for the border, but the wait at the border was essentially four days of sleeping in your car. Wow. Um, and it was sub-zero temperatures. And because of his back problem, he said, I, I cannot manage four days in a car in sub-zero temperatures. I'm just, I'm not, he said, I'd rather die in a, in a bombed out hotel, you know, flat on my back. So we contacted Aaron to help see if we could arrange a medical evacuation and to coordinate with Operation uh, Dynamo. And they do great work. Um, we weren't able to get the, the medical evacuation in time, but it, it did get coordinated down the road, they just happened to get over the border before. Um, my daughter looked up uh, all the border crossings and the wait times and she found a better border crossing. It was further away, but they spent essentially a day in the car. And, and she so, could find this information online? That's extraordinary. Um, well, she, she does all kinds of things that young people do on, yeah. on their computer. She was also a part of jamming the Russian TV networks by wow. doing a DOS attack. So she's been She's involved. very adept. And yeah. how old is the child that's with them, his child? Uh, he's 17. So it was very important that they all get out because otherwise, he would be of conscription age, but because he's a Russian national, there's some heightened suspicion, even though he's oh, wow. lived he's lived in Ukraine since he was about two. Yeah, yeah. So he's he, he went to uh, Kiev uh, Polytechnic University, 
Um, you know, Ukraine, Ukrainian is his, you know, mother tongue along with Russian. All of his friends are Ukrainian. Yeah. But yeah. again, it's it's an odd situation. Yeah. So, and the and the passports that the wife and the son have, are they Russian or Ukrainian? They, are, they both have Russian passports. Um, and they have um Ukrainian essentially green cards. Right, right. Um, right. so there are a lot of families like that in Russia, in right. Ukraine that are mixed families, but because of the political situation, it makes it very complicated. Right. Um, right. The, so what uh, happened at the border? They got across the border. They did get across the border. It, it, you know, it, it was very miserable for everyone, um, <laughs> including the border guards. I have to commend Poland, they they came in through Poland. The Poles essentially welcomed people, helped them. Um, excuse me, it's no, it's very bit, emotional, and yeah, fed is. them, fed them. We've seen all the pictures of the the big soup, you know, cauldrons, and and just giving them bread and and rest and some semblance of relief from from yeah. getting. I mean, they can, way. you cannot, um, you cannot thank the Poles enough. They have been so accommodating. And also, for example, um, uh, Peter's wife's passport was ex in the, in the process of expiring. She had applied right, for sure. a new one in, in, uh, in Ukraine, but of course it, she can't go and pick it up there. The polls said, not a problem, come on in. Uh, people who have expired documents, they've been let in. People who don't have uh, passports for the travel passports for their dogs are let in. They've just really stepped up to the plate. I, I cannot say enough about their welcome. And I'm sure it's the same in, in Romania and Moldova. And, it's extraordinary, yeah, the it outpouring of support. So then now they're in Italy, they made it to Italy. Yes, they, they stayed in Poland for a while to apply for their uh, immigration visas for Olga and Oleg to the US. And um, again, you know, the, the passport situation for Olga is, is a bit problematic. But um, it, there are so many people in Poland that you can't get a hotel room. It's hard to find accommodation anywhere. And they thought, you know, they're going to be more following us. Right. You know, we got out quickly. So they thought, you know, it, let's just continue on and keep moving keep yeah. moving mm -hmm. so they are in italy they have um they have been given a hotel room um in a nice hotel i asked them oh is it you know some horrible place and they said no it's absolutely lovely they're given three meals a day uh they have been given a um a uh, tax number, they've been given uh, a, a health card because there's National Health Service. Um, so they also have been, you know, uh, well taken care of in Italy. Um, obviously, they want to be in the US. Peter, yeah. none well, of them daughter speak Italian. Your father. You know, uh, none of them speak Italian. They speak, all of them speak English very well, um, as well as Russian and Ukrainian. So being stuck in, in, in Europe does not help them very much. Um, and I think psychologically for Peter, and I'll just backtrack a little bit, <clears throat> it's important to get away from all of Yeah, this. it's a war. Um, yeah. He's been, you know, this is the third time he's been displaced, which that's pretty hard on someone. He was first exiled from the Soviet Union because his father was traded for a spy in 1970. His father was a well-known dissident in the Soviet Union. We, after we got married, we went back 
to what was then Russia rather than Soviet Union. And we started a business there, which was very successful. Um, but it got Radirstva, which is when uh, essentially uh, kind of state-sponsored gangs take over successful businesses. So they took over our business. And uh, because Peter um, sponsored a journalism prize in, in Russia, he was not well-liked by Putin. And we had a lot of vandalism and a number of the prize winners were killed, like Anna Politkovskaya. Um, it became obvious that it was very dangerous for him to remain there. So again, he left, left obviously the business behind. Uh, we divorced, he moved to Ukraine. Um, Olga and Oleg moved from Moscow to Ukraine with him. They built another business apparently and so now they've left, he's left behind a second business, a third home, um, you know, the guy can't uh, catch a break, you know? Yeah. So what's the situation now and, and how was it that we were able to be helpful? Okay, well, uh, Aaron, Aaron's helped us all the way through trying to, you know, get him across the border, you know, get medical evacuation, get documents together. The the thing that has been very difficult is because they are refugees and they're essentially going from place to place, they half the time they don't know where they are, they don't speak the language. Um, the way US uh, CIS is set up, they send uh, notifications to a, uh, to a physical address by mail. Oh. Now, what? So, if, you know, you put your home address, you know, they ask you to put your home address, Kiev, Ukraine. Well, that doesn't help oh my if you're not Lord. there. Yeah. So, so we kept, uh, Aaron, we kept asking her, oh, what's going on? Have they received all the documentation? What, what's the status? And she's been on it the whole way and helping us navigate, you know, what to do at what time she found out that, oh yes, they requested more information to complete the file because they're missing divorce decrees from uh, Peter and I, and then Olga and her uh, former partner. Um, and obviously it cannot be completed and fulfilled. Good Lord, who can get that, that from this from Russia at this point? I mean, that's just incredible. Yeah, you can't so get that from Russia right now. Um, no, I mean, and and I don't think that they thought, oh, we'll need our divorce decrees. Let's no, bring them they along left. with us. Right. You know, that wasn't wasn't really a top priority. So Aaron's helped with all that. She's also asked them to expedite it, and they seem to have responded quite well. Um, Good. Because a lot of times spousal visas can take a very long time. Yeah. Um, so. But they seem to be moving it, Aaron, at this point. Aaron has moved it, and I didn't yeah. think that the bureaucracy in Washington could be moved that much. So uh, all I can say is, is kudos. We are obviously trying to get the rest of their documentation together so that it'll be complete. And then we hope to be able to uh, usher them into your office and well, we'll have we'll have a fine ceremony when they when they get back. But Alexis, thank you for sharing that just extraordinary tale. I'm I'm grateful and it is emotional. I can't even imagine. We're all watching on television and video and it's so painful to watch, but to have family in this situation. And the main reason to do this video today is to get the word out to anyone else across the second congressional district that we're here to help. As I said, Aaron did get families, full families, some of them nine people out of Afghanistan. And wow. uh, it was really, really Good extraordinary. She's had quite, a, quite an amazing year. So yeah. With that, we'll turn to David. Thank you, Alexis, for being with us. David, it makes your, your situation pale in comparison, I'm sure, but yours is equally important to us, the, the economic well-being of our state during COVID. Can you walk us through uh, the situation that you found yourself in and, and how we were able to help? 
Sure, and thank you again for the opportunity to speak with you. Uh, my name is David Kulo, and I'm president of Rosemont Ventures, uh, and we do business as All Terrain, and we're located in Newport. And to give you an idea of who we are and what we do, we sell highly effective skin protection products using natural ingredients. So those include deep-free insect repellents, uh, itch relief soaps, creams, and sprays for poison ivy, eczema, general itch and rash, bite and stings. We also sell a topical um, antibiotic uh, and bandages to help protect cuts, scrapes, and burns. So I can't speak highly enough about uh, how helpful your staff was, particularly Davis Bornstein, who was our main point of contact. Um, and Davis, by the way, is our newest employee. So <laughs> he'll be proud to hear this. Well, I, I can't Well trained by Don and Aaron. Right, it, it was Don. I was gonna give uh, kudos to Don now that I know that uh, Davis is a new employee. She must do her job well, because he was very professional and incredibly helpful. Uh, also, Aaron um, has been helpful in terms of reaching out and coordinating this, uh, this uh, event and opportunity. So um, just to fill you in on, on how helpful your staff was. So we were working with the SBA on a financing and there were delays and delays and delays and issues with their portal, et cetera, which is natural um, given how busy the SBA is with all of this uh, COVID and economic injury funding. Also just the, the standard red tape that goes that you go through with the SBA. But our challenge was is we were coming up on some deadlines and what your team was able to do was to help uh, escalate our application to the SBA's high priority team. So it got uh, a, a little bit of a, a faster review um, because it had been for so long during the process. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, went through the whole process, but um, was fast tracked a little bit at the end. And so we received the funding on a timely basis and it's been very, it's been instrumental in helping us grow and navigate COVID uh, and to create jobs uh, and help us to meet our overall mission, which locally in Newport is to help improve the health and wellness of people in Newport and more broadly help kids uh, health and wellness, which is something that we're very concerned about because of childhood obesity, uh, diabetes, depression, and ADHD. Well, this is incredibly helpful to hear. Um, we, you know, it's so much has gone on in our country over the last two years and around the world uh, from COVID and now from the war. And uh, it's hard to remind ourselves or take ourselves back to May of 20, March of 2020 when COVID first hit uh, the U.S. And I, I, I like to remind people Congress was facing a total economic collapse in the face of a highly contagious global pandemic. And, um, you know, we did not know what to expect coming out of the shutdown. And... Um, what we were trying to respond to is how to keep small businesses like yours alive and running, keep the paychecks running, even if people were not purchasing your products. And I think um, I give a lot of credit to the congressional staff that, that rarely gets that kind of credit. Their quick thinking on that paycheck protection program and these EIDL loans, the economic injury loans for small businesses, and just the American Rescue Plan in general, uh, turned out to be remarkably successful. The New Hampshire went up to an 18% unemployment rate at one point wow. that spring, and um, just thousands of people um, getting, getting, um, you know, losing their jobs, uh, businesses closing, a lot of restaurants. We're still dealing with the restaurant situation. We just voted last week on funding for some of the restaurants and, and gyms and small businesses that uh, have really struggled to recover, that people still had not gone back. Um, I'm sure the stings and burns kept coming. In fact, probably people at home <laughs> were having more problems than not with all the home cooking. Um, 
but really now uh, it's kind of remarkable where our, our unemployment is all the way down to, I think, 2.4 or 2.5% in New Hampshire. And I'm sure it's your experience. It's hard to actually find workers if you have, you know, be kind to the ones you have. That's the message right now um, and value your employees. But Ironically, in some ways, the economy is really uh, very strong, very hot right now and causing inflationary pressures because um, for a number of reasons, not the least of which is Ukraine and, and Putin and the uh, gas situation, the price of gasoline, and um, but also the supply chain disruptions. And so I'm hoping that you're managing and you're in your small business. We do as much as we can to help small businesses across the state. And I, I really appreciate you telling your story today so that people know if they've got an application pending at the Small Business Administration, uh, please give us a call. If, if you or anyone watching this has issues with the IRS, there's been tremendous backlog at the IRS and we can help with that as well, with social security, um, with the uh, payments, the uh, uh, child tax credit payments um, that are due to people. Uh, we can help you this being tax season and, and taxes being due um, this week. Uh, we want to remind people about that deadline as well for the IRS, but we're here to help. Um, Don and Aaron out of our Concord office, uh, please be in touch with us. And um, thank you again for being with us today. And we will share this widely and get the word out. Thank you to Alexis for your amazing story. We'll keep you in our thoughts and prayers, but also keep pushing the paperwork to make sure yeah, that uh, David and Olga and Elga and, and um, that your family can be uh, reunited. Your daughter can um, have, have her father back in her arms. And David, thank you again for sharing your story. Great to be with you. Thank you very much um, on behalf of not just our company, but for all the, the small businesses and businesses uh, in New Hampshire. Um, we couldn't uh, do it or have navigated uh, without you and your team's help. So thank you again.